Welcome to the third episode in a Legendarium series about Justinian's Wars. In part three, Vanquishing the Vandals, we will talk about the East Roman War against the Vandals, who occupied North Africa during the collapse of the West Roman Empire. After crushing the Nica riots in 532 AD, Emperor Justinian found himself with a free hand to expand East Roman power westward. Justinian saw himself as the emperor of all Rome, not just the East, and he intended to regain the lands of the former West Roman Empire now carved up among Germanic nations, with the Vandals being one of the most preeminent. In the 430s AD, the Vandals invaded the Roman-held provinces in North Africa and captured the city of Carthage. From this base, they also seized Corsica, Sardinia, and the Balearic Islands. Finally, the Vandals captured and ransacked the city of Rome in 455 AD, which greatly hastened the final decline of the Western Empire. And to see my video on the Vandal sack of Rome, follow the link in the description. During the 455 sack, a Roman princess named Eudoxia was abducted and forced to marry a Vandal prince named Hunneric. By Justinian's time, a son of Hunneric and Eudoxia, Hilderic, held the Vandal throne in Carthage. In truth, Hilderic had good relations with Justinian, dating back to when Justinian was heir apparent to his uncle Justin. However, Hilderic was overthrown by his cousin Gilderic in 530 AD, which gave Justinian a reason to declare war upon the Vandal kingdom. Indeed, Justinian also hoped to retake one of the most valuable provinces of the old Roman Empire. Along with being a fertile grain-growing region, the port of Carthage ranked among the most important harbors in the Mediterranean. Emperor Justinian appointed Belisarius, the victor of Dara and Constantinople, the leader of the expedition. Belisarius had almost unlimited power to conduct the war as he saw fit. In the summer of 533 AD, 500 transports and 92 warships headed for the city of Carthage. The ships carried 10,000 infantry and 5,000 cavalry along with 32,000 sailors. The vast fleet crossed the Adriatic Sea and stopped off the coast of Sicily. After restocking, Belisarius headed for Africa. Three months after leaving Constantinople, the East Roman army landed on the African coast, five days east of Carthage. From there, the soldiers marched to Carthage along the coast, with the fleet sailing alongside them. Fortunately for the East Romans, the bulk of the Vandal army was in the island of Sardinia, where Gilderic's brother Tizan was fighting a rebellion. Belisarius showed respect to the local people, ordering his men not to loot. Soon enough, cities began opening their gates to Belisarius. As Belisarius's army approached the town of Decimum, eight miles from Carthage, King Gelimer confronted him. Gelimer planned to simultaneously attack Belisarius from three sides. Gelimer himself would lead a cavalry charge from the rear, his brother Ameth would attack from the front, and his nephew Gibamund would charge with 2,000 warriors from the south. On paper, this should have been able to push the Romans back into the sea. Unfortunately for the Vandals, hilly terrain made it impossible for the three detachments to see each other, so the Vandals attacked piecemeal and were crushed in turn. Ameth attacked first, with a group of 300 shield-bearers, or heavily armed horsemen. He found himself fighting Belisarius's heaviest troops, his personal bodyguard called the Belisari. Amath died early in the fighting and his warriors fled the battlefield. About a mile from the site of this Vandal defeat, another battle took place, in which Hun mercenaries employed by Belisarius destroyed the Vandal host of Gibamund. 
Gelimer, who came up with the main army, had some success at first, but he stopped to bury his brother Ameth, in part because he believed Belisarius' main army to be far to the north. He proved to be badly mistaken. Belisarius' next attack proved to be a smashing success, and he scattered the Vandals. Gelimer himself fled deep into Numidia, while Belisarius occupied Carthage and began to rebuild and strengthen its walls to withstand a Vandal siege. Once more, Belisarius gained the support of the local people by ordering his troops not to loot. Gelimer started a guerrilla war, launching hit-and-run raids against Belisarius' East Romans. He even paid his men in gold for every Roman head they collected. He also tried to get help from Visigothic Spain, but this attempt failed as the Visigoths had already learned of the fall of Carthage and saw nothing to gain by helping a king who had already lost his throne. The leaders of the Berber tribes in the region decided to watch and wait, in part because Belisarius bribed them generously. Yet despite all these setbacks, Skelimer found some hope when his brother Tizan returned from Sardinia to join the war effort. Combining forces, Gelimer and Tizan approached Carthage, blockaded the city, and cut off the Roman water supply. Facing a slow death by thirst, Belisarius instead marched out of the city just as he had at Dara. The next great battle of the Vandal War took place in the middle of December 533 near the town of Trichomar, about 15 miles from Carthage. For a long time, the two armies simply watched each other from across the battlefield until Belisarius finally charged, forced the Vandals back into their camp, and slaughtered 800 of them. Unfortunately, Gelimer was able to escape because Belisarius' men stopped to loot the Vandal camp. With great difficulty, Belisarius gathered 200 soldiers to pursue Gelimer deep into the desert. Belisarius and his hand-picked 200 men surrounded and besieged Gelimer, where he holed up in the mountains of Papua. After a three-month siege, the last king of the Vandals surrendered in the early spring of 534 AD, less than six months after Belisarius arrived in Africa. By then, Justinian had become worried by Belisarius' success. He even feared that Belisarius would declare himself the king of Africa, and so Justinian recalled Belisarius to Constantinople on the pretext that he wished to honor him with a triumph through the streets of the capital city. 2,000 Vandal prisoners marched in Belisarius' triumph, and later they were stationed as conscripts on the eastern frontier for Justinian's ongoing war with Persia. Over 600 years after Carthage fell to the Romans, and over 100 years after the fall of Carthage to the Vandals, Justinian had made Rome the master of Africa again. Yet the ultimate prize, Rome, remained beyond his grasp for now. We will talk about how he went after this greatest prize in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this installment of The Legendarium. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.